string let us see one by one over there the packet length if you can see about that the length of the packet in uh, which is going to be represented in bytes which not include the packet length and the MAC fade the padding length nothing but the padding which is going to be given over there this padding length is nothing but a random uh, padding field number which have been given over there next one payload the payload which is nothing but which useful content of the packet prior to algorithm negotiation this field is going to be uncompressed if the compression is negotiated then uh, in subsequent packets this field is going to be get compressed over there then random padding again we are going to take the random padding over here this random padding is nothing but once an encryption algorithm has been negotiated uh, this field is going to be added it contains a random byte of padding so that the total length of the packet uh, is a multiple of the block size cipher block size or 8 bytes for a stream size that is going to be fixed over here and next one is nothing but message authentication code mac code so if the message authentication has been negotiated this field contains a MAC value. This is nothing but the MAC value which is going to be negotiated by this particular algorithm. And if the MAC value is going to be computed over the entire pocket plus a sequence number, the MAC value is going to be computed with the entire pocket along with the sequence number. Together it is going to be uh, computed as a MAC value. Uh, this sequence number is nothing but an implicit 32 bit packet sequence that is initialized to zero for the first packet and incremented for every packet the sequence number is not included in the packet sent over the tcp connection uh, once an encryption algorithm is going to be negotiated the entire packet which excludes the mac field which is going to be encrypted after the mac value is going to be get calculated so the ssh transport layer packet exchange consisting of an sequence of steps the first step the identification string exchange begins with the client sending a packet with a identification string to form a ssh proto version software version which is consisting of an sp value commons value cr value and lf value what is this sp cr lf which is something but space character carrier written and line feed respectively so an example of a valid string if you're going to see a board it may be ssh 2.0 bills ssh 3.6 like it goes on over there so here the server responds with its own identification strings these strings are used in the diffie element key exchange so next what happens which comes an algorithm negotiation so each side sends a message uh, which is going to be consisting a list of uh, supported algorithm in order to preference to the sender uh, there is one list of each type of cryptographic algorithms uh, such algorithms includes a key exchange encryption mac algorithm and compression algorithm. okay example if you're going to see about uh, triple des blowfish two fish 256 two fish 192 these are the ciphers and meanwhile and mac algorithm which may be hmac sha1 hmac md5 such a way it's going to be there some types of comparison algorithm as a compression algorithm it may be no compression or it may be compression z lib such a such data are going to be get used over there in the next step is a key exchange so the specification allows for alternative methods of the key exchange but uh, yep, at, at present only two versions of Diffie Elman key exchange are specified. Both versions are defined in uh, record format 2409 and which is going to be require only one packet in each direction. Such a way it's going to do its operation. So which is going to negotiate the hash algorithm decided during the negotiation of the algorithm which can generate a random value and which can generate a random value which is computed as uh, yes receivers and which verifies the KS value as a result what happened all the steps the two side now shares a master key and in addition to the ser server has been authenticated to the client because the server has used its pre private key to sign its off of the Diffie element exchange finally the hash value H server as a session identifier for this connection 
Once it's computed, the session identifier is not exchanged even if the key exchange is going to be performed again for the connection to obtain the fresh key. Uh, at the end of the key exchange what happened which is going to be signaled by the exchange of SSH message uh, new keys packets. At this point both uh, sites may start using the key generation from K as discussed subsequently so that the key generation is going to be happened over there. At the final step is service request the uh, client sends an SSH message service request packet to request either the user authentication or the connection protocol either it may be an authentication or a connection protocol subsequent to this all data is exchanged as the payload of ssh transport layer protocol a protected key exchange and map then the key generation is going to get started so the key exchange encryption and mac uh, which may include an iv value are generated from the shared key a sec a shared secured uh, sec secured key so that the hash value from the key exchange function h and the session uh, identifier which is equal to the h value unless there are uh, there has been a subsequent key exchange after the initial value exchanges so such a way this is going to be done over there in this and coming to the user authentication protocol the user authentication protocol provides the that mean by which the client is going to be authenticated to the user or the server so message types and the formats are going to be get fixed over there based on the message exchange uh, the data which is going to get processed over there and then authentication method the server may require one or more following authentication like uh, a public key which have been used or password which have been used or host based such a way it's going to create the data then it's going to move on to the connection protocol let us discuss about uh, ssh user authentication protocol okay so in generally the ssh user authentication protocol which consisting of an message uh, type and formats and next one message exchange and the third one is called authentication methods these are the three important things which is going to get present over there so here the message uh, type consisting of a three message types are going to be present over there it may be ssh message user authentication request ssh message user authentication failure ssh message user authentication success these are the three things which is going to get present over there where username is going to be authorization identity the client is claiming the service name uh, is the facility to which the client is going to be requesting the access uh, and sometime what happened the method is the authentication method which we have been used over there being used in this request so the first uh, byte as a decimal value of 50 which is interpreted as ssh message authentication request so if the uh, uh, server either uh, uh, accepts or rejects the authentication request uh, what happened the second it may accept or reject isn't it so when it rejects the authentication request or accept the authentication but requires one or more additional authentication methods that the server sends to this one such a way a byte if it's going to be a failure it's going to give 51 if it's going to be a success it's going to give 52 if it's going to be a request it's going to be giving 50 like, like this it's going to do this operation over there then move on to the next one message exchange the message exchange involves the following steps which has uh, almost six steps we are going to follow over there the first one the client sends a message request authentication request with a request method of none so the server checks to determine if the server or user name is going to be valid if not the server returns sss message user authentication failure with the partial success value of false if the username is valid the server proceeds to the next step there is nothing but the server returns the ssh message authentication failure with a list of one of the more authentication methods to be get used over there the next fourth step would happen the client selects one of the acceptable authentication method and sends an ssh message user authentication request with that method name and the required specified method which have been specified in that particular field 
at this point there may be a sequence of exchanges to perform the method fifth one if the fifth step if the message authentication succeeds and more authentication methods are required the server proceeds uh, the step which is going to be the uh, server user failure with the list one of them authentication method nothing step 3 will be get followed over them using a partial success value of 2 if the authentication fails the server proceeds to the step 3 using a partial value as failure value as false then the sixth step when all required authentication method succeeds the server sends a success message and authentication protocol is going to be over then the authentication method may use a public key or a password or host based data such a way it's going to do its authentication and it's going to wind up the user authentication protocol here the public key the details of this method depends on the public key algorithm chosen in essence the client sends a message to the server that contains the client's public key with the message signed by the client's private key when the server receives this message it checks whether this uh, separate key is acceptable for authentication and if so it checks whether the signature is correct in case of a password the client sends a message containing a plain text password which is protected by the encryption by the transport layer protocol or if it's going to be a host based authentication the authentication is going to be performed on the client's host rather than the client itself thus a yeah, host uh, that supports uh, supports the multi uh, multiple uh, client would provide an authentication for all its client so this method works by having the client send a signature created with the private key of the client host thus uh, rather than directly verifying the user's identity the ssh server verifies the identity of the client host and then believes that the host when it says that the user has already authenticated on the client side such a way the user authentication protocol is going to work and it's going to authenticate the particular client for the communication next one is 